What's going on, boys? Jason Paglia here from the Sports Keg and Run Pure Sports with another video today. We're going to break down the co-main event for UFC 251 between Alexander Volkanovsky, the featherweight champ, and Max Holloway. No graphics today, unfortunately. I was having issues with the video quality, so I'm just going to talk to you guys about the fight, and we'll go from there. So... Alexander Volkanovsky, I love this guy. Absolutely love him. Uh, he's fighting, obviously, out of the city kickboxing gym. Um, I had the same feeling about Israel Adesanya the way that I did the first time I saw Alexander Volkanovsky. Because when you're a true fan of mixed martial arts, you watch probably 20 other promotions... Um, through the years while you're breaking down fight tape uh, for the MMA cards. And I, one of the promotions that I used to watch back in the day was Australian Fighting Championship. Uh, back in 2016, I think, was the first time that I saw Alexander Volkanovsky. He fought Jamie Malarkey, I believe, at like AFC 16, I think. And he won really impressively, man. And and that was the first time Volkanovski was on my radar. And I followed him from there, really. Certain fighters look special even when they're young in their career. And he was certainly one of them. A few Australian fighting championships later, I see Israel Adesanya for the first time. Another person that you were able to tell was special from the door. And I thought... Both of those guys would be future champions. And, you know, the the rest, as they say, is history. So, when you watch Alexander Volkanovsky fight, he doesn't really wow you at all. You know, he is not a highlight reel like somebody that um, Israel Adesanya would be a highlight reel, right? But Volkanovsky, he is fundamentally sound. He has absolutely no weaknesses at all. His fight IQ is next level. Um, his wrestling and takedowns are elite. He's a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, even though he doesn't really show it off that much. Uh, his striking is phenomenal. Soup to nuts. He's got incredible hand speed. He uses all his limbs. His footwork is great. The angles that he cuts going into the pocket are are some of the biggest reasons why his striking accuracy is so on point. And, you know, if you factor that in with the power that he has, the rest is, it's, it's a wrap. So, initially when I watched that first fight uh, against Max Holloway that night, on the live betting fight cast that the sports gag has, I wasn't overly impressed. Like, I said to myself, did Alexander Volkanovsky just beat the greatest featherweight champion in the history of the sport with leg kicks? Because that's what it looked like in real time. He attacked the legs. It, it gave Max Holloway um, a problem getting inside the pocket. And he pulls off a five-round decision win. So, I wasn't overly impressed. I thought the game plan was weird, even though that he won. Then, I go back this week, and I watch that fight about four times. And he won almost every single striking exchange. And he did it super impressively. Uh, it seemed like every exchange ended by him ducking Max Holloway's exit shot and going over the top time after time after time. And, you know, credit to, to Max Holloway, he's got a great chin because he took some bangers on the button and and he didn't flinch at, at all. Now... Volkanovsky's on record by saying that he was really annoyed with the response from the public after the fight was over. And that makes a lot of sense to me because until I watched that fight a few times, I was not overly impressed by the performance in real time. Now, 
he said on Saturday that he's going to make a statement. And, you know, you have to take him seriously because he's elite. He already proved himself against Holloway once. And when you add into the mix that he didn't even use one of his best attributes in that fight, which is his wrestling game and top control, you know, you, you have to take him seriously. Now, when you take a look at Max Holloway, we already know what the Blessed Express and the Blessed Era was. Max Holloway will go down as one of the best featherweight champions in the history of the sport, and it's not even up for debate, okay? But we also know that in the UFC, as dominant as you are in the prime of your career, eventually that goes away. Father time is undefeated, right? So <clears throat> what do we know about Max Holloway? We know that his fight IQ is incredible. We know that he can take a punch as good as anybody in the division. And we also know that he's an incredible striker, whether it's from range or it's in the pocket. We know that he's never been a guy to take you down to the mat and grind you out for five rounds. It's just not his style. We know that he's going to stand, meet you in the center of the cage, and then he's going to fuck you up, right? Some people fall, some people don't, but he's going to bang in the center of the cage for five rounds. That is, in essence, what Max Holloway is, is all about. My issue with Max Holloway in this fight is I fail to see the changes that Holloway will be able to make in his overall game plan for us to see a different outcome in this fight in the span of seven months. Especially when three of those months, supposedly he's training on Zoom uh, with his coaches because he was unable to train with them due to the pandemic. If you add all that in there, I just don't see what changes in seven months. That is my biggest problem with the fight. And at, at the end of the day, this fight in a nutshell is a story of redemption against vindication. And at the end of that fight, I think vindication will, will reign supreme. I think Alexander Volkanovsky will vindicate that first win with a second one. Uh, and I think he does it probably pretty decisively, considering Holloway fought him seven months ago, hasn't had a lot of time to adjust the game plan, and throw in the pandemic. It's a tall order, and and I, I just don't see it. Now, take an, uh, a quick look at the odds. I know that you guys can't see them, but I can run them off. Right now, Alexander Volkanovsky, a minus 230 favorite. Max Holloway, plus 185, the total four and a half rounds. The over on that total, minus 278. The under is the dog at plus 200. I get it, man. You know, as good as Volkanovski might be, there is a good chance that Holloway could still last five rounds because of that chin. So the total being that heavy of a favorite to the over kind of makes sense. Obviously, the same thing. Will the fight go the distance? Yes, minus 250. No, plus 180. Makes a lot of sense to me. And then we have props like um, the method of victory. Alex Volkanovsky by decision, even money. Holloway by decision, plus 275. Um, Volkanovsky by knockout, 4-1. to one. Holloway by knockout seven to one. Volkanovski by submission fourteen to one. Uh, Holloway by submission sixteen to one. So those are basically your your odds. Now I haven't decided uh, if I'm gonna lay. I think you can get like minus two fifteen at that three six five if you guys wanted to do that. I haven't decided whether or not. I'm going to bet Volkanovski on the money line. I think there's probably value there. The line opened up about minus 220. You can probably get a slightly better price now 
And like I said, based on the circumstances surrounding the fight, I think, you know, you can make the argument that Volkanovski should be a bigger favorite, and the only reason that he isn't is because of Max Holloway's storied career, really. Uh, but... <clears throat> I don't normally bet parlays in general, okay? If you watch uh, the live betting show on the sports keg, I tend to preach against it. I think if you're a consistent, straight better that always bets around the same size on, on every bet, that is your easiest path to success as a sports better. But there are occasions when... I will bet parlays, and normally it only happens uh, in the UFC. And if I do bet a parlay, it's always two fighters, no more, okay? Just a rule that I tend tend to live by. I think that there are, there's an excellent chance that every favorite on the main card wins on Saturday night. Now, the sports keg and our fight casts, we win on multiple dogs every single event that we have. But there are cases where the favorite is the the route to go. And I see a case for the favorite in pretty much every single fight on the main card. So I think if if anybody that watched our video yesterday, the Kamaru Usman, the main event breakdown with Masvidal, I said use Usman as an anchor for a couple two-fighter parlays. I think... That same rule applies to Alexander Volkanovsky. I think you use Alexander Volkanovsky as an anchor in two fighter parlays, and I don't think you go wrong. As a matter of fact, I think if you round robin the main card, the favorites, I say you probably come out a winner at the end of the night in two fighter parlays. So what we're going to do as a, as our free pick is. We're going to use Alexander Volkanovsky double chance. That's available at Bet365 and a couple other places. Basically, that means that Alexander Volkanovsky by knockout or decision, you get a slightly cheaper price than the money line. It's about minus 170, I think. And we're going to parlay that with Amanda Rebus against Paige Van Zandt. That two-fighter parlay gets you down to minus 120. I just don't see how Paige Van Sant, even though Amanda Rebus is going up in weight, I don't think it matters. I think that girl is special and a couple years from now has the potential to be a future world champion. And I think she's going to run through Paige Van Sant. She's an $8 favorite for a reason. I think it might be slightly overpriced, but... I think she has a considerable edge in the fight. So I'm all for throwing her in a parlay with Alexander Volkanovsky double chance. Get you down to minus 120. And uh, we're going to rock with that. I'll have money on it, obviously. I bet anything I give out. And that's all we got for this video. Tomorrow night we'll be back. Uh, me and Joey work with UFC fighter Brandon Royville. We'll get his thoughts on the main card. That'll be on this channel tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. And then Saturday, obviously, we will be live betting UFC 251 all night long. Come check us out. We'll be on around 5, 5.30, all the way through the main event. Uh, should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. And we'll see you there.